वेलकम ऑल टूडे इस क्लास वी बिलीव डिस्कसिंग अबाउट डायनेमिक सोल डायनेमिक टेस्टिंग ऑफ पाइल्स इन लास्ट क्लास वी हैड डिस्कस अबाउट डायनेमिक टेस्टिंग ऑफ पाइल्स पर्टिकुलरली रिलेटेड टू हाई स्ट्रेन टेस्टिंग सो द टेस्टिंग द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द पी डी ए द पाइल ड्राइवेबिलिटी एनालाइजर टेस्ट वॉज टू फाइंड आउट हाउ मच इज द स्ट्रेस इज विच आर गेटिंग डेवलप इन टू द सॉइल एज वेल एज द पाइल मेटेरियल पर्टिकुलरली ड्यूरिंग इम्पैक्ट लोड ऑफ पाइल ड्राइविंग और हैमर इम्पैक्ट as well as so the, the uh, that will ensure like the stresses which are developing because of the impact load are much lesser than the bearing capacity of each of those material whether it is soil or or, or particularly the pile material in addition we also discussed like how uh, by use of acceleration sensor by use of strain sensors how uh, how we can get an idea about uh, 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 the amount of resistance offered Uh, uh, in the form of toe resistance or in in the terms of skin uh, friction from one inter uh, phase uh, one location or maybe multiple layer which are possibly providing some contribution to your skin friction because you are uh, depending upon whether the pile is uh, frictional pile or end bearing pile uh, the component of skin friction or end resistance will govern the uh, uh, load bearing capacity of the pile so we using the acceleration sensors which are precisely uh, uh, used to to get an idea about how much is the wave velocity whether it is the direct wave or reflected wave and then we had strain sensors which are totally uh, getting an idea like how much is the force or resistance offered from different different interfaces whether it is uh, free standing pile whether it is uh, a frictional pile we also discuss uh, starting with the to um, Uh, or or uh, uh, free standing pile or to, uh, toe pile or uh, end bearing pile like how much uh, uh, how how you can actually interpret the results based on uh, reflected wave from the one is the wave which is directly induced at the acceleration sensors and strain sensors and second one which will go down and reflect from the toe level and again uh, start traveling towards the sensors so again uh, considering we had consider in our derivation up to second reflection which is coming from the toe and those components of uh, uh, acceleration we we had consider to find out how much is the force you are getting actually in terms of uh, end bearing and then we also discuss in case there is intermediate layer between the pile head and the toe which is again offering some kind of uh, shaft resistance or skin friction so that will uh, again cause some kind of uh, heterogeneity or some kind of medium which is again uh, uh, causing some kind of reflection from the inter intermediate depth so again some component of that inter uh, uh, re reflection will travel towards the sensor again uh, certain portion will travel downward as a tensile wave as reflect from the bottom it will again start uh, traveling towards the sensor as compressive wave so we had discuss in detail like what are the governing equation how each of these governing equations are coming into picture what are the uh, uh, components you are getting from toe resistance what are the component you are getting from skin friction so once you know uh, those values from a typical um, strain time history as well as acceleration time history you can get an idea about velocity time history as well as force time history uh which we are getting at different different levels if you uh, uh, so this way you can get an idea how much is the total uh, resistance a pile which is already casted in situ uh, offering against external loading so in today's um, uh, lecture that is lecture 20 we will be discussing again about dynamic testing of the pile but this time we will be discussing about low strain test that's uh, the test which which uh, which uh, generate or uh, the tests which are governed by the response of the pile against small uh, strain uh, shock waves so uh, as we discussed like large strain dynamic test particularly the pda which we had discussed last time uh, targets so there are two targets basically there so what are the stresses which are uh, developing in the pile material because of the hammer impact because uh, uh, whether it's board pile or cast in situ pile finally the pile is driven into the soil by means of impact load by the drop of the hammer so because once you start dropping a hammer from a particular height there will be some stresses developing in the pile all along the cross section as well as some stresses will be developing at the interface of the pile as well as um, soil medium so in order to ensure whether those stresses are much below than the bearing capacity of the material 
this test will be useful and then uh, how much is the resistance offered by the pile against external loading. So, that will ensure that the, the, the parameters of whatever resistance you had taken in design uh, while de uh, designing a pile is actually the same resistance offered by the pile in its in situ condition. When we come to low strain tests that is uh, what we are going to discuss today. So, those tests are primar uh, primarily used for two objectives. One is to understand whether the pile cross section as well as the length of the pile that is the uh, cross section means diameter of the pile if it is circular pile if it is uh, uh, other cross section or maybe spun pile. So, what is the characteristics of the cross section whether uh, after casting in situ similar cross sections are uh, achieved. Uh, in situ condition because if the cross section is varying the resistance offered by the pile the load carrying capacity of the pile or actual characteristic of the pile will be different from whatever has been considered in the design parameter. So, again there will be a lot of uncertainty or risk once you uh, uh, presume something about the pile cross section as well as the length which is completely different from actual structure of the pile. So, in order to understand the cross section of the pile as well as to understand the length of the pile because we know particularly when it is frictional pile the length of the pile should be strong enough or sufficient enough so that it should be capable of developing enough skin friction which is required to support external load. So, this is one objective where you will be interested to find out what is the cross section of the pile, what is the length of the pile and then once you know these parameters you can get an idea how, how these parameters are actually matching with your design consideration. It is like comparison between whatever you had considered in the design and whatever is actually executed at the site of the interest. Second thing, uh, it might be possible uh, because of certain uh, reasons like the pile concrete will undergo or uh, will tend to some kind of defects. Some of them as we mentioned here like necking, honeycombing, segregation, cracks, arching etcetera. So, these are different kinds of defects which, which are uh, possible when you are pouring a concrete uh, into the pile cross section uh, definitely considering the length of the pile there are more chances you can have similar defects at different different depths. So, you have to pour the concrete also in a control environment and uh, you have to do necessary uh, uh, guidelines you have to follow in order to ensure like these kinds of defect is not there that that. So, this uh, 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 we do generally when you are casting the uh, concrete for, for the particular pile, but it may be possible like even after taking so much of uh, 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 care it might be possible like any of these kinds of effect or maybe combination of these or each of these may be at different different depths has actually been taken place after the uh, pile is casted in situ. So, in order to understand if in the casted cross section the pile at any cross section or at any length has been uh, uh, witnessing any kind of defects like necking, honeycombing, segregation, cracks, arching. Now, what will happen when these defects are there? The strength of the material, the strength of the concrete at that particular location will not be the one which you have considered into account. So, because of change in uh, uh, strength characteristics, because of each of these defects, it will have an uh, direct it will have a direct effect on the resistance offered by the pile or the load carrying capacity of the pile. So, two things are there one is to ensure that the cross section or the physical dimensions of the pile are as per the design. Second thing whatever material you are using whether the material is able to achieve the strength whatever you have designed it for. So, those can be understood once you are able to detect what are the defects if it is there. So, this method can be used to, fi to find out even the defects. So, like uh, all these whatever has been discussed. So, overall once you uh, are done with these kinds of defects that will get you an idea like the design cross section, the characteristics of the pile are meeting your design requirement you are good to go further for uh, low transfer mechanism or, or construction of superstructure on that without uh, much uncertainty of. Uh, 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 risk or serviceability compromise. So, these are the basic objectives with which uh, we, we, uh, we are going to start about uh, low strain test. So, commonly used methods as I mentioned like uh, couple of methods uh, uh, which are particularly used when in order to ensure uh, 
the in situ property as well as the design properties. So, the in this particular case there are two methods, one is uh, uh, sonic logging method which is also called as cross hole sonic logging CSL and then you have pyre integrity test or what is also abbreviated as PIT. So, we are going to discuss about these two methods in today's class. So, uh, sonic logging method as the name suggests it is an in situ test because uh, we are interested to find out the characteristics in its in situ condition. So, it is an in situ method which is used to study for any kind of possible defects. So, this is most important thing you are interested to find out any possible kind of defects which is existing at the pile. It may be at the bottom of the pile, it may be near the pile head, it may be at some intermediate depth. So, anywhere when defect is there it is going to compromise the uh, uh, load ca carrying char characteristics of the pile and overall the serviceability of the pile or the factor of the safety of the foundation. So, this is uh, this method is particularly useful for identification of any defects which are available at the uh, pile uh, in situ condition in terms of strength variation. So, you are interested uh, to understand if there is any kind of possible defect in the pile for that you are in, you rather than directly searching for the defects you actually find out how much is the strength of pile or the material which is used for pile casting at different different cross section. So, by doing this we know like uh, in earlier methods also we understood like depending upon what kind of shock or what kind of disturbance you are creating in the material, the material offers resistance. Now, how much is the resistance material offers that depends upon the strength material is offering against that shock. So, in this particular case also we try to understand or we try to uh, identify any possible defect by studying variation in its strength against uh, variation in strength in the pile material which is possible indication of defects. So, whenever uh, there is change in the strength characteristics in comparison to what is supposed to be the strength of that material or the pile cross section that is possibly indication of that the pile is subjected to some kind of defects at that particular uh, observation point. So, being cheaper the cross hole sonic logging or CSL method because it is cheaper it is more convenient. So, almost you can do this test at every pile. If you so, if you remember correctly uh, when we were discussing about uh, high strain test we told like those tests are uh, 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 quite time consuming and costlier also. So, generally we do those kinds of tests for 5 to 10 percent of total number of piles. However, this test that is a sonic logging test you can uh, the test is quite uh, cheaper. So, as per the available literature it is possible to do this kind of test almost for every pile. The test consists of detecting the anomaly or the defect uh, in terms of uh, 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 strength of the pile material which are possible indication of the defects in terms of acoustic irregularities. So, you are interested to find out the defect you or the anomaly, anomaly means like what whatever is supposed to be the strength of the material, but in actual site condition you are getting something which is different from the supposed to be uh, strength. So, that is known as the anomaly here. So, we are interested to detect this anomaly in terms of acoustic irregularities. We are going to uh, generate some kind of uh, acoustic emission into the uh, pile medium and depending upon the resistance offered by the medium again that acoustic uh, 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 disturbance you are going to quantify the variation in the strength or directly the defects you are going to detect in the pile material. So, it can the test can be done all along the pile length. So, you do the test along the pile length that is going to give you an example uh, idea about at which, which particular depth the pile is subjected to some kind of defect. So, while doing the test you generally use two probes. Now, now we have gone through number of methods. So, you, you might be knowing like whenever we are going for uh, uh, any kind of strength measurement or any kind of resistance measurement generally we use minimum two kinds of uh, probes sensors. So, one will be the receiver another will be the emitter or the source. So, in this case also you are having two probes one is called as emitter 
that is which is emitting the acoustic vibrations or or, or uh, uh, disturbances and the other one is the receiver. So, these are minimum two probes are required depending upon the cross section you can go for multiple number of uh, probes, but at the same time you will be using one receiver one, uh, one uh, uh, emitter. So, the, both of these are lowered into hollow spaces. So, what we do uh, uh, generally when we go for cast in situ pile, we, when we lower your uh, reinforcement cage, you actually uh, uh, adjacent to the reinforcement cage, you actually uh, put hollow uh, PVC pipes of course, with certain uh, 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 clear dimension between the reinforcement cage and the PVC pipe in form of tubes. So, these are the hollow spaces. After that, you do the concreting. So, later stage actually you can put your sensors or the probes into these hollow tubes and depending upon uh, uh, the resistance offered to acoustic uh, disturbance which is generally created by the emitter, you are actually uh, able to quantify the resistance or the strength variation. So, uh, this um, PVC tubes you generally uh, install along the periphery of the reinforcement cage by leaving a clear uh, cover between the reinforcement cage and the tubes. So, typical field uh, setup as I mentioned here. So, what I mean to say when I uh, say like uh, cast in situ pile. So, I am showing here uh, maybe uh, the cross section uh, maybe the length of the pile. So, this may be the length of the pile or the uh, uh, in situ condition. Now, here I am just putting reinforcements If you see the same thing in the cross section maybe here, so what I am doing trying to say here, suppose this is your pile cross section diameter D, there will be some reinforcement cages depending upon the design purpose, how much is the number of longitudinal reinforcement provided. So, with respect to longitudinal reinforcement, you actually put some PVC pipes also before you actually uh, start um, concreting. So, those PVC pipes will be adjacent to those. Of course, some clear uh, cover will be there that is 3 times the diameter, uh, 3 times 5 that is uh, the reinforcement diameter minimum clear cover of minimum clear cover between this and this. So, uh, depending upon the cross section, you can put more number of PVC pipes. These pipes will be running along the pile length. So, all along the pile length if again you see, so if this is your reinforcement, so adjacent to the reinforcement may be somewhere here you can have these PVC pipes. PVC pipe or tube and this one here also I can indicate here longitudinal reinforcement now if you see here the same reinforcement actually it is this PVC pipe it is somewhere here or you can call it as hollow tubes generally 50 mm diameter tubes are there. So, it is like when you are lowering your con concrete cage or when you are preparing your uh, uh, reinforcement cage, they, you will be installing this PVC pipe along the uh, uh, periphery of the reinforcement cage after leaving a minimum uh, clear cover of 
three times the uh, reinforcement diameter between the reinforcement as the as well as uh, the PVC pipe. Then you lower it. Once the concreting is done, this pipe will be remain hollow there. So the uh, the probe whatever I mis, uh, mentioned here. So uh, you can mention here like probes which are like emitter as well as receiver both are lowered into PVC pipes. So, once you lower it lower into PVC pipe till bottom bottom of pile. So, now you have lowered uh, so uh, like uh, depending upon the cross section as I mentioned here. So, maybe you can number also here maybe PVC pipe 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So, if, if you lower in uh, re receiver uh, in emitter in 1 you can put receiver in 2, if you put, put emitter in 1 you can put receiver in 3, 1, 4. So, every time you will be getting depending upon the distance between the source and the receiver you will be getting uh, uh, you will be de actually detecting your acoustic time or the time after which the uh, disturbance created by the emitter will be detected by the receiver. So, every time you will be getting actually the travel time or acoustic velocity. So, if it is 1 and 2, so depending upon the distance between uh, 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 PVC pipe 1 and PVC pipe 2, you can get an idea how much is the distance, how much is the travel time uh, detected by the receiver, you can get uh, actually the acoustic velocity same thing you can do for different different combination like keep the receiver uh, emitter at uh, same PVC pipe, but keep on shifting the receiver because every time you uh, shift your uh, receiver uh, hole uh, you will be getting uh, uh, for different different di direction you will be actually getting how much is the actual uh, acoustic velocity maybe. So, 1 2 then here also you can get an idea about acoustic velocity. 1, 3 and then acoustic velocity 1, 4. So, it is like receiver is there at 1, uh, emitter is there at 1, receiver is there at uh, 1 time at uh, uh, tube 2, 1 time at tube 3, 1 time at tube 4. You start doing the test, first of all you do the test at the bottom, maybe in uh, maybe uh, tube number 2 you put your receiver, you do the test then go to the uh, next level or slightly pull the uh, both the receiver and the emitter and again do the test and similarly. So, you do the test at different different location and every time you will get an idea about travel time versus velocity, uh, travel time versus depth or acoustic velocity versus uh, uh, depth. Now, once you reach uh, the, the receiver as well as the emitter reaches the same way till the surface you can shift the receiver from uh, maybe probe number uh, or uh, tube number 2 to tube number 3 again start doing the same test from the bottom to the surface. So, if you are taking it uh, again I can put here slightly bigger size circle or the pile cross section. So, if the probe is like 1 is here, 2 is here, 3 is here, 4 is here, 5 is here and 6 is here. So, I told about 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5 if I am putting the receiver here, emitter here, every time I am putting receiver here or here or here or here or here, every time it is going to give me how much is the acoustic velocity which is directly an indication about the quality of the material or quality of the propagation medium. So, if you are putting emitter at 1, receiver at 2, so you are actually detecting how much is the acoustic velocity in this particular range or how much is the strength in this range. Then you go to 1 and 3, then you will be targeting for this 1 and 4, 1 and 5, 1 and 6. 
So, that is how you will be actually getting an idea about overall how much is the strength variation here. So, if some kind of uh, defect is there here or here or here or here or here, you can get an idea because any kind of defect will be actually compromising the uh, uh, strength of that material uh, or resistance of the material against uh, acoustic disturbance. So, that will be indicated by particularly delay in your travel time or reduction in the velocity of um, uh, velocity of propagation through that medium. So, that is how you can do the test, same test you have to do at different different depths. As I mentioned you start doing the test on the bottom, then you move to next shallower depth, next shallower depth and same way you can get an idea about how much the acoustic velocity uh, throughout the cross section. Then you compared with the standard value of acoustic velocity for that construction material to be used, you can get an idea at which particular depth there is drastic change in the velocity which is possible indication there is a defect at that particular depth or if it is not then you can ensure throughout the cross section your uh, 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 this thing, uh, the strength of the material is almost consistent. Another thing depending upon because you are actually lowering the emitter as well as the receiver. So, once you, uh, you reach the particular depth, you can actually compare that particular depth with the length of the pile. That will also ensure your, your uh, uh, the bottom most uh, cross section also the concrete strength is proper. That means, if you uh, once you reach the bottom of the um, uh, um, uh, or, or the toe of the pile, and then first you to do the uh, you, you the first test at the pile toe, then compare with your acoustic velocity that is going to give you an idea about how much is the intactness or how much is the uh, strength of the material at that uh, pile toe. So that's how you can get an you can ensure the quality or uh, the strength of the material all throughout the length of the pile. As I mentioned here, so both the tubes PVC pipes, almost 50 mm diameter are first filled with water like once concreting is done, you fill those things with water, then you lower the emitter as well as the receiver into each tube that will ensure that, that, that uh, I mean emitter and uh, receiver you lower into each of these tubes till the bottom. That will ensure like uh, you are actually ensuring the quality of the concrete throughout the cross section starting with the base because again depending upon the characteristic of the base also uh, the load carrying capacity of the pile can vary. So, the emitter generates sonic waves or disturbance in terms of uh, sonic waves. So, emitter generates and then depending upon uh, the cross section it will actually travel in all the possible direction. As I mentioned in earlier uh, um, slide also, so depending upon the emitter, depending upon the source, only that particular direction between in which the receiver is kept, the, the source which uh, the disturbance created by the emitter will be detected by the receiver. But in actual it will be traveling or it will be propagating on all the direction. So, that is uh, important to remember, it is not like the emitter is only uh, generating the disturbance in the direction of receiver, it is not. However, you are actually not able to receive other disturbances because there is no receiver to detect those things. Then some of the waves are getting detected by the receiver in the other tube. So, you know in which tube you have actually lowered your receiver that is going to give you an idea about uh, uh, the travel time, uh, the distance between the source and the receiver and depending upon the time when the uh, receiver detects the arrival of sonic disturbance, you can get an idea about propagation velocity there. Based on the arrival time as well as the distance between the emitter and the receiver, the sonic wave velocity can be determined again depending upon because each of these uh, emitter as well as receiver are attached to the surface recording assembly by means of connecting cables. So, depending upon the length of the cable some markings will be there that is going to give you an idea you are doing this test at which particular depth. So, depth is equally important because if, if you do not measure the depth you will, will, you will never be able to uh, understand uh, uh, like the variation in strength is corresponding to which particular depth or the depth of the defect is you, you cannot be 
able to locate. So, that is why uh, very much uh, identical to uh, recording the time of travel for at the receiver, it is equally important that uh, we should lower the, uh, we should know the depth at which you are actually doing the test. So, repeating the test at various depths, so here I am talking about only one combination, only one combination of source of emitter or source and receiver. So, you have to be very careful, it is not like uh, uh, you do test at the bottom in, um, uh, in maybe one tube and then change it to another tube and do the test again at the bottom, no. You have to actually finish those tests at different different depths, uh, considering one two for emitter, one two for receiver, do the test for entire depth and then you re uh, repeat the test keeping the uh, emitter at the same tube, but shifting the receiver to maybe some other tube. So, it is like at each uh, test or uh, uh, the test has to be done at different different uh, locations or different different depths considering the placement of receiver as the as well as the uh, emitter in same tubes, like re receiver in same tube and uh, uh, emitter is in the tube at the starting of the test will remain in the same tube till the end of the test, but both tubes will be separate. Okay. From sonic logging profile, so you can uh, actually understand if uh, that the distance between the source and the receiver if it is same or you are having just one emitter or, or two tubes are there, then actually based on the travel time between the, uh, uh, I mean along the depth or if the distance is changing between the source and the emitter or, or receiver, then between the, uh, how the sonic wave velocity is varying with respect to the depth, you can get an idea. So, from the sonic logging profile, what you get? You actually get how much is the acoustic velocity at observation point and same test if you do for different different depths. So, how, how is the uh, sonic logging velocity is varying throughout the depth, same test you do for different number of uh, tube spacing, you can take an average and that will give you on an average how what is the characteristic of your pile cross section at different different depths or overall cross section of the pile, o overall uh, dimension of the pile. So, the comment, so this is going to help you in, in uh, commenting on overall quality of the concrete, overall quality of the concrete at any depth or throughout the pile length. So, the profiling can be done either in the form of travel time as I mentioned, if the distance between the receiver and the source is same, you can interpret in terms of travel time or you are putting more number of two for receivers, you can, be, it will be better, you can determine the value of directly the sonic wave velocity. So, it is going to give you the variation in sonic wave velocity with respect to the depth. Now, we know like uh, you have compacted concrete for a particular density, so depending upon that particular density of the material, thus there will be some uh, uh, resistance offered or there will be some kind of uh, acoustic wave propagation velocity in that particular medium. As the density of the concrete is going to change, it will have direct effect on your uh, acoustic wave velocity or travel time between the emitter as well as the receiver. So, there will be a delay in travel time that means the medium is offering less resistance, when it is offering less resistance there will be a delay uh, uh, in time uh, uh, by which the receiver actually detects your acoustic signal. So, this delay is actually indication of change in the concrete quality. ASTM D6760-02 also provides guidelines based on which actually you can do the uh, field setup like depending upon the cross section what is the minimum distance between uh, PVC uh, tubes and uh, what is the minimum clear cover distance and so on and also what is the procedure to be used, how much is the uh, depth at which you have to take the recording and then how you go for interpretation part because interpretation is very important because uh, this field recording is going to give you uh, or is going to comment on the quality of the concrete. 
Now, based on the quality of the concrete you are getting from typical field record, you are going to decide whether to, to accept this particular pile which has been casted in situ or you have to reject this pile considering the quality of the concrete overall along the cross section of the pile. So, that important decision because uh, if, if the pile is not meeting the uh, uh, design requirements, there is no point in uh, keeping that pile as structural member, you have to actually uh, reject the pile. So, those uh, uh, decision making has to be done based on expert opinion as well as the codal provisions. Now, I have been telling repeatedly like depending upon the uh, uh, quality of the concrete, it is offering more resistance or less resistance against acoustic uh, disturbance. So, a good quality concrete provides resistance or, or uh, uh, the sonic wave velocity of propagation can be 12,000 feet per second or equal to 3700 meter per second. So, if some change in the uh, uh, this propagation velocity may be 3000 or 2800 that is going to give you an idea like the quality of the concrete is not as per the design consideration. Same way in terms of water it is 4800 feet per second or 1500 meter per second, in terms of air it is 1200 feet per second or 300 meter per second. So, same way depending upon the material in which you are doing the test you can get an idea on, uh, on an average or uh, what is depending upon the strength of that material or density of the medium, how much is the resistance the medium should offer and how much is the uh, medium is actually offering. So, that is identification of the anomaly or commenting on the quality of the concrete. Now, uh, this is about the interpretation part, how you do the test. So, uh, bond between the concrete which is actually casted in situ uh, covering the reinforcement as well as and the tube. So, the bond between the concrete as well as the tube should be strong enough to ensure a good contact between the two because if the bond between the two is not uh, um, uh, intact, there will be uh, uh, weakening of the signal which is generated from the emitter because the same signal will not be transferred from the PVC pipe to the adjacent concrete. So, the contact force or the, the, the contact between the two medium the concrete as well as PP, PVC pipe is to be ensured to be very good. At times PVC pipe that is why uh, in order to avoid any kind of slippage or any kind of gaps that is why what people do, do uh, uh, at times they, they the PVC pipe outer periphery is also roughened or maybe some kind of scratching can be done so that there will be some kind of good bonding between the PVC pipe as well as the concrete. Minimum one tube per feet should be pure, uh, purely vertical and, and I mean it should be provided. So, it is it's desired like uh, uh, not more than one tube, yeah, I mean should be provided in, in this dimension. Moreover, the tubes whatever has been provided because each time you, you lower uh, your receiver and the, uh, the uh, emitter, you are actually going to get an idea about the depth of the test based on the length of the cable which is inside the uh, tube. So, in case the tube is not properly vertical, the interpretation of depth is also wrong. Again all the tubes should be parallel. So, it uh, it's, if it is vertical at each of the um, uh, uh, placing of the tube, then it will be also uh, parallel. Otherwise, uh, the distance between the receiver and the emitter if it is varying, it will actually affect or it will actually compromise your results quality because the travel time will uh, though the travel time will remain same, but uh, the distance between the source and the receiver if changes it will have positive or negative effect on the calculated uh, uh, acoustic velocity. A minimum cover of 3 inch, so it was uh, I mentioned 3 uh, times diameter you can consider minimum cover of 3 inch should be provided between the reinforcement cage as well as the adjacent tube. Upon concreting around the tube, the same concrete are filled with water to ensure no loosening of bond because when, when the tubes are filled with water, uh, there will be some uh, gain in the cell weight of filled uh, water filled uh, tube. So, that will ensure like 
as as you do the concrete the, the there will not be any kind of slippage between the tube as well as the concrete because it is again going to compromise your bond value so in order to ensure that the bond remain as intact as possible immediately after the concreting you fill these tubes with water so that uh, once the test is done water should be removed uh, test is done means uh, 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 i mean when the test considering lowering of receiver in each of those uh, tubes are done like overall for a particular pile once the observations are done you can remove those water or uh, and the tube should be mixed with the should be grouted with the appropriate mix the test is done at least uh, after 24 hours of con uh, curing so once the concrete is laid and after followed by 24 hours of curing of the concrete that is a minimum time after which you have to do the test not before that because before that the concrete will not be uh, uh, gaining the sufficient strength so generally it is desired like after 24 hours of curing for after uh, casting then 24 hours of curing then only you can do the test so since the testing requires continuous power supply this is uh, like uh, one consideration considering the uh, uh, field testing because you have to have continuous supply of uh, power so uh, you have to also ensure like the the vehicle which is uh, used for uh, power supply should be able to reach the site otherwise there will not be power supply and uh, there will be some uh, uh, complication again first observation of acoustic velocity uh, velocity should be done at the bottom of the tube so you keep on lowering once you see okay it has reached the bottom you can start doing the test that will ideally it should be equal to the length of the uh, pile as well then you can lower uh, i mean you can uh, pull both of the uh, receiver as well as emitter by equal amount so that both reach same depth again for next uh, uh, test do the test and vertically uh, pulling up at every time you will be actually repeating the test at different different location so any knots in the cable if present where times after continuous use of these kinds of probes what you see like uh, uh, there are some kind of knobs knots but if those are there you have to remove because knots means you are actually uh, uh, overestimating the depth so in order to get a proper understanding about the depth of observation any knots if are present should be removed or should be uh, should be uh, uh, unfolded for correct assessment of depth of the observation then depending upon the findings the expert can decide as i mentioned depending upon the finding like uh, 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 ideally considering the strength of the concrete the the propagation velocity should be something but once you go for uh, uh, actual field measurements if you find the concrete quality or the acoustic uh, uh, wave velocity is significantly lower than what uh, what was supposed to be then expert can decide whether to accept or to reject the pile considering uh, the quality of the concrete as observed from your field observation so that is also um, and that is another observation which can be done here again uh, if, the, if there is marginal disturbance or some uh, uh, i mean at later stage if it is required like uh, uh, this test is not going to give you uh, 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 confident uh, uh, outcome in order to comment on the acceptance or rejection of the pile you can go for detailed assessment by using other methods also so typical field record as i mentioned here you can consider maybe this is so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so one is emitter then i am considering two receiver three as receiver four as receiver five as receiver and six as receiver so depending upon the cross section you can actually place those things and uh, now if uh, a typical field because as i mentioned will be something like sonic wave velocity typically in feet per second or meter per second increasing in this direction and this direction it will be depth 
typically in meter which will be typically maximum value will be you can consider maybe pile length or length of PVC tube uh, which is available beneath the pile. Now, you started doing the test, so this was your maybe pile length. actual pile, this is the cross section, of course it is not two scale. So, you did the test at different different depths every time you do the test you can have more number of tests in between also. So, these dotted lines are showing actually the location in which I have done the test. So, between 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 3 and 1, 6 and so on, as I mentioned like depending upon the quality of the concrete of concrete as we have seen in the table uh, uh, velocity of sonic wave equal to 3700 meter per second. So, if I consider there is no defect in the uh, 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 quality or, th or there is no compromise in the quality of the concrete, you may get something like this field record throughout the depth. It may be from 1 and 2 like the receiver is at 1 and um, uh, the diameter is at 1 and receiver is at 2. Same you can do the test at other location also, maybe 1 and 3 and so on, 1 and 4 and so on and then you can have maybe one average curve, average curve that is going to give you, so this is like sonic wave velocity. This is in case, if I am considering again here like 3700, if I am considering here 3600 meter per second, I can consider throughout the depth your quality of the concrete is sufficiently good. So, I can go for acceptance on the other hand you can have. So, in case there is some kind of defect what will do you will have some kind of disturbance here something like that. So, this possible thing which is lowering in wave velocity So, this is an indication of indication of possible defect. In concrete, it can be because of honeycombing, it can be because of arching, it can be because of necking and so on and so forth. Any reason which is responsible for delay in your uh, uh, detection of signal at the receiver is possible indication of compromise in the quality or reduction in the quality or any kind of possible defect. So, that is how you can get an idea about possible defects in the concrete. Okay. Now, the test is also known as cross hole sonic logging method or CSL or cross hole ultrasonic method that is CHUM. Now, I am going to discuss another method here, pile integrity test. So, objective of this test as I mentioned like the previous one method that is uh, like uh, uh, sonic logging method you have to put PVC pipe at the time of con ca casting and then by lowering the probes and doing the test you actually con con uh, uh, comment on the quality of the concrete throughout the depth. In this particular method also you, you try to assess the concrete quality, the cross section, the length of the pile. So, overall basically you are commenting on whether the pile considering the quality of the concrete or considering the physical dimensions of the pile whether the pile is as per the design and then of course, it will help you in decision making part. So, the previous one method required uh, 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 placing a hollow tubes while casting however, in this method you do not require any such thing you can actually do the test from the surface observation. So, it does not require any kind of tubing while casting the concrete as done is uh, cross hole sonic logging method. The field setup consists of attaching escalation sensors 
to the finished pile head. So, you need not do any kind of uh, uh, tubing there or, or any kind of lowering of the probe, simply you can do the test by attaching the uh, acceleration sensor to your finished pile head at the surface because once your concrete is, uh, is done, later on also you can do the test by just putting the sensor on the finished pile uh, head which will be visible onto the surface because rest of the portion will be underground. Now, in this particular case the test uh, in the impact load will be by means of a small hammer at the pile head is used as a source. So, you actually um, um, providing some kind of impact load and is very much similar to your PDA because of this impact load there will be some kind of disturbance or velocity will be propagating throughout the pile depth and depending upon the response of the pile against this disturbance which will be recorded in terms of a reflected wave either from the, uh, uh, the depth or maybe from intermediate location you are actually going to get an idea about the cross section of the pile throughout. So, the response in terms of reflected wave as observed from the sensor record is used for interpretation part. So, what it means to say like if the cross section of the pile is uniform throughout every time you do the test you will get uh, depending upon the quality of the pile depending upon the length of the pile you should get your reflected wave after certain time interval T1, but if at shallower depth only you are having some kind of increase impedance or reduction in the impedance that will have direct effect on your uh, uh, the time of arrival of your uh, wave here. So, that way you can comment whether the cross section of the pile is uniform throughout, whether there is some defect there and so on and so forth. So, guideline for field setup. So, depending upon uh, uh, G and P in 2004 at given guidelines based on which you can uh, 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 get an idea like where to put the acceleration sensors, where to put your, uh, uh, so this is like accelerometer or acceleration sensor and then you can have maybe hammer impact. So, in case it is a, a square pile in case of square pile though not uh, uh, very very much practice. So, if this is your acceleration sensor and this is your hammer impact the minimum distance between the two should be 1 by 4 times d. Similarly, in case of spun pile, so this is your uh, inner diameter, this is your outer diameter of spun pile So, you have acceleration sensors here and in between acceleration sensors you are having impact load. or the hammer impact. So, the minimum distance between hammer impact and this one should be 75 to 100 mm. The distance, uh, I mean the minimum distance between your acceleration sensor as well as your hammer impact that is this thing. Similarly, in case of circular pile, this is the minimum disturbance between the two should be d by 4 this is particularly when your diameter of the pile is less than 0.6 meter if the diameter is more than 0.6 meter you can have actually hammer impact in between and then acceleration sensors all around. This is for d is greater than 0 0.6 meter. So, this is going to give you an idea about uh, how to place the sensor as well as uh, hammer impact positions for PIT test. Data interpretation, 
as I mentioned here, in order to get the velocity time history, because you have to get an idea or comment on impedance contrast on the material or the uh, or, or the directly the change in the cross section of the pile. So, you have to get an idea about velocity time history because that is going to give you how much is the velocity uh, of propagation through the pile medium. So, this you generally get from acceleration sensors by integration upon hammer impact the wave will travel between the pile head and the toe with a velocity which is a function of the concrete quality. So, if the concrete quality is good, you will have the velocity equal to the standard one. If the concrete quality is bad or the density is too low, there will be reduction in the propagation velocity as well as. So, depending upon the signature of reflected wave, signature means based on, typically based on the arrival time of reflected wave between the pile head and the toe, this will help you in understanding the medium characteristics. Medium characteristics again I am telling like concrete quality as well as uh, uh, the cross section of the pile. So, sharp reflection is an indication of impedance contrast that is change in material properties of the pile other than the design parameter. So, same way you can get an idea about this thing. What I mean to say, so if this is your pile I am again saying here in terms of if this is your pile, if I am considering like pile is straight and length is complete. So, in this particular case, whatever disturbance you have created at the surface after time maybe 2 L by it, um, uh, after time uh, 2 L, you will get actually a very clear peak here. Okay, I, I can put maybe uh, reduced one here. What I meant to say here, if your pile is straight, as well as length is complete, you will get very clear peak. So, this is like when you had the impact load when the reflected wave is received at the surface. So, pile is impact when the pile is actually reduction uh, when there is reduction in the length of the pile casted in C2 in comparison to this, what will happen? You will get something which is earlier than that like this. So, this is the reflected wave. So, pile is straight, but, but smaller in length. Same way, if there is change in the medium characteristics of the pile, like this. So, you will have something like this, like this because first reflection will be from this interface and then later on the wave reflected from the actual toe of the pile will be received at the pile head. So, this is like decrease actually in the decrease in cross section at deeper depth. These all are given. So, same way like if there is continuous change in the cross section of the pile like this, if you see the same thing you will get continuously disturbed acceleration sensor. Uh, this is like a reflectogram. This is pile section and this is comment or description about pile. 
about the pile. So, this is like irregular cross section, irregular cross section of pile throughout. So, that is how you can get an idea about based on your reflectometer you can get an idea about whether the pile is straight, whether the pile is uh, having increase in the cross section, decrease in the cross section or the end of the pile is uh, fixed or free depending upon the cross section. So, decision making the test is done to ensure that the pile is meeting the design requirements that is the cross section of the pile, the length of the pile, the impedance contrast. In case of sharp uh, reflection from the toe as indicated by delay in signal, the pile can be considered as accepted. In case of weak signal, because weak signal may be because of concrete quality also, expert has to decide depending upon how much weak is the signal whether to accept or reject a pile. In case of sufficient reflection you are getting from intermediate depth, as I showed here the complete irregularities, possible indication of irregular cross sections throughout, the pile has to be rejected. In case the pile is rejected that means you cannot uh, use that pile as uh, actually load bearing member you have to go for casting a new pile. The existing pile should be replaced with new pile. In case of doubt you again you can go with other methods to check the uh, comment of this. Now there are certain limitations also the test detects the defect based on the change in impedance. So, in case there is uh, marginal change in the impedance probably the PIT or pile integrity test will not be able to detect that. Again the change in impedance is a collective effect of the reflection you are getting because of change in uh, concrete quality or maybe change in the pile cross section. So, it is difficult to uh, distinguish between the two based on your uh, recorded ground motion. Third thing the impedance can also be because of uh, change in pile characteristic or maybe the resistance offered along the pile shaft by the soil. So, again whether it is going to be because of pile shaft or because of soil which is available along the periphery, it can cause uh, uh, change in the, uh, uh, the recording signature, but it is difficult to detect whether it is because of pile or whether it is because of soil. Defects which you can generally de detect you can uh, uh, using PIT or particularly when there is in case of crack you can detect, in case of joint you can detect, in case of change in cross section can be detected and uh, removal of cover. major change in material properties. So, all these things can be detected by means of PIT, what cannot be detected? Include, this is a uh, like gradual change in change in uh, this is S part Turner 1997 gradual change in cross section cannot be detected curved piles cannot be distinguished and uh, uh, removal of cover removal of cover or loss of cover. So, these things you cannot detect and gradual change in change in material properties. So, the major change in material properties can be detected, but not uh, gradual change in material properties. So, the, with this actually uh, uh, I have reached to the uh, end of this uh, dynamic testing of pile chapter 
so overall we have discussed about uh, uh, how the uh, overall decision can be made depending upon the stresses, depending upon the uh, quality of the concrete, depending upon the cross section or length of the pile, whether the pile which is actually casted in situ should be used as load bearing member because finally it is going to affect the design life or the serviceability of the structure or it has to be rejected or you have to do some more test to gain confidence whether the pile which is actually casted in situ meets your actual design consideration. So, these are basically the uh, main objectives why, when once go for, one go for uh, uh, dynamic testing of the pile. So, with this I stop here, thank you.